Hello there, my fellow members of the Scientist cast, and welcome back to some Battletech lore. Today we're gonna take a look at some of the last battle armor designs of the clans, which we haven't described yet. As the title says, they may not be the most well-known designs, but they are, on the other hand, among the most unique and interesting we've covered so far. They are the Afrit, the Burak, and the Kyukalan. Apologies in advance for the lack of many pictures, like a lot of other armor designs, especially obscure ones, these are not very rich in that regard. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The first of today's designs is the Afrit, massing at 1 ton and a cost of 557,000 sea bills. Looking to rebuild the battered Ice Hellion morale, Khan Mantos charged her scientists with producing new designs of all kinds, as both a symbolic and military gesture to her clan. Following in the footsteps of a new generation of battle armor that appeared over the previous decade, the various design teams began creating several rather mission-optimized designs. One was a reconnaissance design with a superior ground speed and VTOL capability, which unfortunately lacked any integral weapons or defensive measures. Another variant encompassed impressive anti-infantry capability, but looked to be pointless with the Ice Hellions, apparently intent on remaining in the clan homeworlds. Khan Mantos combined the two projects and teams in an effort to create a design that, in her words, embodies the beliefs and traits of our totem. The two teams deliberated and debated for a long time. Finally, just as the deadline was about to pass, the two teams debuted the Afrit to Khan Mantos, and the design impressed her enough during the demonstration. Just like the typical Ice Hellion battle doctrine, the Afrit emphasizes raw speed over everything else. Not only does it have full jump capacity, but a relatively recent acquisition of jump booster technology allowed it to become the fastest home clan design suit. Taking advantage of its speed, the improved sensors give the suit the ability to perform low-key reconnaissance when commanders deem battle mechs to be insufficiently stealthy. I guess these people never heard of the Steiner Atlas Recon Lance. Taken from the second suit's anti-infantry capability, a light recoilless rifle and a couple of vibroclaw adaptations have an impressive psychological impact against conventional infantry while also increasing the suit's effectiveness against battle mechs when performing swarm or leg attacks. For years, the Ice Hellions guarded their battle suit with zeal, going to a lot of effort to prevent any of them falling into the hands of other clans. Although rumors of Afrit points being used during the Jade Falcon attacks on various Lyran systems persisted, it wasn't until the point of Afrit-clad elementals arrived with the Falcon delegation on Ark Royal that the use of non-Hellion Afrit was confirmed. Its use by the Falcons against the Inner Sphere proved it to be a potent suit against conventional forces, as the few innovative elementals in the Falcon forces were seen loading their recoilless rifles with different kinds of ordnance, ranging from anti-vehicle to incendiary to even flares, depending on the mission. Ever since, both the Jade Falcons and the Hell's Horses have captured large amounts of the Afrit suits during the fighting in the occupation zones, enough to make them a common sight in the two clan forces in the Inner Sphere. In addition to fielding the original configuration, both the clans modify their suits extensively to match their own needs and equipment availability. But so far only the Jade Falcons have been seen to actually produce the design although the Hell's Horses may also be doing that back in clan space. A freed battle armor mounts a 40-shot light recoilless rifle. It uses standard manipulators with vibroclaw adapters, and so may not employ conventional infantry weapons. In addition, each of Reed features integral jump jets and a jump booster for a maximum leap of 120 meters per turn, plus an improved sensor array functioning as a portable radar sensor. As a clan design, it also features the Hargel auto repair system. Some variants of the Afrit also exist. The Jade Falcon variant was started in 3072. It replaces the rifle and the sensors with an AP Gauss rifle and fire resistant armor. The Hell's Horses variant was introduced in that same year, 
but this one replaces the equipment with a one-shot SRM-3 and a Bear Hunter autocannon. Finally, the Interdictor variant was introduced in 3076. It was designed to counter Blakist electronic gear, and it has a heavy machine gun and an ECM suite in place of the AP Gauss rifle. The second and probably most unique looking of today's designs is the Burak, massing at one ton. It is said that hordes of Buraks accompany the Hell's Horses Ranger clusters. These terrifyingly fast battlesuits often outdistance their prey, including enemy battle mechs to cut off any retreat. Anti-piracy actions along the horse's border often relies on Buraks to range far and wide to locate bases of operations, storage depots, landing zones, and hidden foes. The limited weapons on the Burak forces the units of these into support roles, although their great speed keeps them very safe until help arrives. The Burak's Mimer booster more than makes up for its lack of jump jets with its remarkable ground speed. This allows the quad suits to keep up with fast Omnimax in the Ranger clusters. The booster consumes so much space in fact that the Burak's armor and weapons are severely limited by it. Thus, it is employed more often against soft targets, or as an interdiction unit controlling avenues of approach and retreat. The Burax comm system is also robust, allowing the free-ranging suits to report back through all but the strongest of enemy jamming. It was Kappa Galaxy's 85th Battle Mech Cluster that responded to a pirate raid on Icar in 3122, where Sarkon's Bloody Handed had slaughtered the constabularies of three major cities. Before the horses could respond, the Bloody Handed had withdrawn with several thousand slaves and two dropships laden with treasure from the world's metal and gem mines. The 85th gave chase into the barons and tracked the pirates to the world of Krillacor in September. One Star Captain Melissa Ravenwater's point of Burax scouted the wilds of the Tarid Valley outside Loriac. The rainy season had just ended, and the speedy Burax crossed the southern ground easily compared to the 85th tanks and mechs. She would stumble upon the pirate headquarters in a vast cave network under the Richlin estuary. Ravenwater communicated a find before leading her star into the depths. When the enemies were caught outside their battle mechs, the Burax would slaughter the bandits, although the bloody-handed commanders and those that they enslaved were not to be found. The main feature of the Burak is its Mimer booster, enabling the armor to reach ridiculously high speeds, for battle armor, of up to 75 km an hour. Operators of the Burak must rely on that speed for protection, as the armor's hull is only protected by 175 kilos worth of standard armor. In its role as a scout unit, it has improved communication gear and mounts a searchlight. As weaponry goes, the standard variant has two machine guns on the body. The hunter-killer variant of the Burak features the short-ranged but mighty Bear Hunter Super Heavy Autocannon. It does retain the Mimer booster and searchlight of the standard model, but also come with improved sensors. Last but not least, the support variant is used as an artillery spotter, its main weapon being a single advanced SRM-2 launcher coming with four reloads. This one also retains the Mimer booster, but the most important feature is its light target acquisition gear. Which brings us to the third and final design of today, the 1.5 ton Cucullan. Supposedly named after the greatest hero from Irish mythology, the Cucullan support armor was a joint project of Clan Wolf in Exile and the Kell Hounds, put into production before the blackout. Both the parties expected the Clan Jade Falcon to step up its attacks on the Lyran Commonwealth and hope to buttress their armored infantry with the new suit. Thus, the Cucullan came into service and stood at the forefront of Lyran resistance in the subsequent clan invasions. The Cucullan is intended for direct support of other battle armor, and thus mounts strong armored protection, but a severely limited movement profile. It shines when in cooperation with lighter suits like the Great Death Armor series. Improved stealth armor gives the Cucullan an advantage over attacking enemy forces at the edge of the engagement envelope, while the lighter suits can swarm the enemies that attempt to close by. It was made available for general mercenary purchase early on, although Ark Royal prioritized delivery to units in Lyran employ. 
The Kell Hounds fielded a large number of them before the disaster on Timkovich, and Wolves Dragoons retain a sizable force as well. It has been deployed by favored units of the LCAF and is generally available within Clan Wolf in Exile. Clan Wolf sees the number of the suits during their surprise assault on the Commonwealth in 3140 and fields them in scattered elemental trineries. Operation Hammerfall saw the invasion on Kosciuko in 3137, during which a force of the 4th Royal Guards Kukalan suits supported by Fenrir II's took position in the ridgeline opposite a vital road leading to the capital of Warsaw. When the Tamarin militia forces attempted to retreat through the tunnel, the Kukalans attacked them, drawing the militia into an ambush by hidden Fenrir II assault battle armor which would completely annihilate the enemy. This particular action has subsequently been studied across the inner sphere as a textbook example of a small unit action. A less adept use of the Kukalan featured in the defense of Tropicana in the Tatiana island chain on Farkad during the Jade Falcon invasion of 3143. The 20th Arcturan guards used their brand new platoon of Kukalans in the metropolis despite the limited mobility of the suits. An attempted ambush of the Jade Falcon vanguard entering the city turned into a disaster when the Falcons brought a unit of assault battle max. The Turkinas and the other heavily armored units were able to wade through the fire of the Kukalans. Even after the platoon abandoned their detachable weapon packs, they lacked the speed to escape. The Wolves Dragoons' use of the suit during the invasion of the Federated Sons brought the Kukalan into action on the other side of the inner sphere. On Mockport, the Dragoons' Kukalans reaped a bloody toll on a Davian battle armor company supported by Holbrook units as it attempted to drive the invaders out of the city of Camden. Their ER medium pulse lasers were simply more powerful and accurate than the Hoburg's LRMs, a factor that decided the battle. The Davian infantry were forced to retreat and were soon caught up by a sweeping Dragoon counterattack which forced their surrender. The only ranged weapon system on a Kukalan is the ER medium pulse laser mounted on the left arm in a detachable weapon pack. Once the ER medium pulse laser has been detached, the Kukalan speed will double. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about these three battle armors, the Kukalan, the Burak, and the Afrit, for today. I don't know how I managed it, but I somehow put the three most difficult to pronounce designs of this type in the same video. My apologies if at any point I actually mispronounced them especially to the Irish folk who are watching. Personally, I do like the look of the Kukalan most, since it does look both intimidating and futuristic. What about you, though? What are your thoughts on today's obscure-esque designs? Did you know about any of them prior to today? Did you ever see or use them in your games? As always, I look forward to reading your thoughts on the matter in the comments below. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please leave a like, share and subscribe for future content. Thanks a lot for watching and have a healthy and awesome day.